Okay, so hello everyone, welcome to this webinar today where we'll be discussing the world of small and medium sized enterprises on the island of Ireland. Uh, before I go any further, I'd just like to start by saying to everyone watching this uh, that I hope you are safe and well and looking forward to the new future when that arrives. Amongst other things today, we'll be talking about the fact that SMEs are still hiring, how they're able to adapt to change so quickly as they are some of the most innovative enterprises in the world, and as well as we'll have a look at what the future looks like for them. Today we'll be chatting to Joanne McAvoy from CareerBoost about how they help to link graduates with roles in SMEs up and down the country. And we're also joined by Brida Clancy from APOS and Margaret Kerwin from Goatsbridge Trout Farm. So hello everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Tonight okay. you can join us on this bank holiday, lovely Friday morning. Uh, I'd like to just kick off by uh, I've got, I've been able to introduce myself. So, Breda, can we start with you? Just kind of talk Hi. about yourself Hi. and your company. Hi, I'm Breda Clancy, obviously, and um, so I'm a process dorsalist by profession, and I am managing director of APOS, which is Atlantic Prosthetic Orthotic Services. We're based in the west of Ireland, down in Kilcolgan in County Galway. Um, but we provide prosthetic and orthotic clinical services and manufacturing um, nationally. Um, so before this happened, we were in the middle of a couple of changes business-wise. Um, we employ 30 staff and we provide uh, so clinical services um, kind of all around the country, really. So prosthetics are artificial limbs and uh, orthotics, orthotic devices. A lot of people know sports orthotics for footwear, but we also do a lot of disability services for children, paediatrics and um, adults um, and uh, people with chronic disability. So uh, we are involved in clinical assessment of those patients, but also we have a manufacturing unit uh, where we manufacture the devices on site here. Um, so we have, as I said, 30, 30 staff in three different areas in the company, really. Um, the manufacturing being quite a separate area really to the clinic area, but we're all linked together quite nicely. Yeah, I'll, I'll hand over to Mark there. Yeah, Mark, you can go next. Yeah. <laughs> I was intended to listen to, to that was interesting. Yeah, we, um, we go to the Trout Farm as our company. Uh, we're based in Kilkenny and Wicklow. We produce um, um, freshwater uh, rainbow trout. We supply the Irish market fresh fish and value added products like smoke products. And we also supply to the UK. And um, we've got um, also a, a trial site in Ireland, which is a border owner site where we're looking at other species like perch. All freshwater, um, and um, yeah, I suppose we have twenty-seven people employed, um, and we're it's a nice day for fish farming, I suppose. That's very true. And Joanne, perfect. Well, hello, I'm Joanne McAvoy, and I'm project manager of innovation programs in Intertrade Ireland, and I manage the Career Boost program. So, Career Boost connects science, engineering, and technology graduates with real jobs in innovative companies across the island. Each role is contracted in either 12 or 18 months. Previously, Career Boost was known as the Intertrade Ireland Graduate Programme, and we've been successfully offering jobs to graduates for the last since 2001. I think we can, you know, see even just from the short introductions there, the, you know, the world that's actually out there and the loads of different companies that students and graduates can actually work for that I don't think they know exist, which is why, you know, Career Boost is great because you can introduce uh, you know students to these companies uh, unfortunately given the world win i'd be uh, remiss of me if we didn't talk about you know the global pandemic and everything that's going on so just in reverse order so go second with you joanne can we just talk a little bit about how your business has been affected you know by COVID and you know, all the restrictions that's been put in place and how you've adapted to it absolutely so as you can see i'm not in the office today we're working from home now and luckily with the technology everyone's able to keep in touch and keep morale going um, on our site website, if you look on intertradeireland.com forward slash career hyphen boost, you'll see that we're still advertising jobs, which is great to see. I think it's important to say that in this current economic uncertainty, that there are small businesses out there that are still hiring and they're still looking for skilled and motivated workers. So that's where we come into play here and help graduates learn about these. So I think the main thing is that to let people know that it's still there's changes out there with the economic uncertainty at the moment, but we're still business as usual. And that's, you know, great to hear. Margaret, yourself, how, is, how are things going for you over there? Yeah, how things going for I suppose overnight we lost a portion of our business with the food service, um, um, I suppose, it completely crashed. Um, but I suppose as a small SME, we were able to adjust and adapt fairly quickly. And um, one of the biggest issues for us, I suppose, and an issue that will be an issue, I, I mentioned the good weather, um, 
would possibly be the fact that we're not selling as much fish from our waters. We're production planning. You know, you've got, you know, high temperatures, low flow, summer months where you would have extra fish in water trying to keep the fish alive. That's certainly a challenge. And uh, the other thing is, I suppose, in terms of our operations, trying to make sure that people social distance, because for a lot of our operative people and on the ground, you can't work from home. They have to come in and process the fish. So it's been a challenge to try and split out the shifts, put the right people in, you know, in the right place from a and, and I suppose from a health and safety point of view, but not necessarily from a technical point of view. So that has made challenges in terms of efficiencies. But um, we managed to generate some some new business and we're very lucky we're still in business, so I won't complain. That's great. And uh, you know, pretty yourself. And yeah, um, we again we huge drop off in that we we've a lot of patients because we provide clinical services. Um, but we couldn't see them because they need to be cocooned. And um, we've done a lot of change in the way we work and link with them. A lot of phone and teleworking, and um, contacting people and Zoom, um, consultations between physios and patients and things like that. And um, from the manufacturing side, we had to change the way people work from a social distancing we have some people who are quite happy with that other people will all club into the same area and trying to change the the um the thought process within people to um to be aware of that it's probably easier for us because we have we have patients coming in the door and we have to use ppe with those patients i would treat everybody as if um they have it and as if we have it to to protect people and protect ourselves and we're also sometimes in and out of the hospital to see certain patients and again, so we're seeing the front line a little bit more. Um, so it's easier to be aware um, of what we need to do. Um, but even doing it is, is quite difficult. Um, so again, the, the hand sanitizer and cleaning and the, the element of all of that is one side. The social distancing is another. And then the change to remote working for many of our staff. We've, we've had lots of people working from home on projects that I had for a long time to do. And we just weren't getting anywhere with them. So we've used this time to accelerate some of those projects and some learning within the company and um, change of processes as well. So I think it, it'll be good for some of those things. And, and we spent some time on risk assessment within our business, things we needed to do. And we've we've got some of those signed off. And now we're dividing into different phases of reintroduction of business and um, trying to make sure that we still um, get some quotations out so that there is a, a pipeline down the way, down the line for funding to come into our business. So we're, we've actually all been quite busy in the time, um, or most people have um, been busy. Yeah. Yeah. I think even just, just, you know, from the quick introductions and the explanations there, we can see, you know, how SMEs are really innovative and how, you know, unlike maybe the bigger companies, just kind of like freighters trying to turn, you're small and nimble, very innovative, you can adjust very quickly. Uh, Joanne, I just want to ask, you know, a bit more about Career Boost and, you know, can you explain to me the process of how it is you link graduates to these companies and these roles? Absolutely. So the, way, the best way to explain Career Boost is essentially it's the missing piece of the puzzle that connects graduates with these exciting roles that are out there. So we're always posting opportunities on our website and on our Facebook page. And if a student sees a job that they're interested in, they're able to apply directly through us for that role by answering a few questions and uploading their CV. John, that's brilliant. And I, one of the really, really good things is the kind of, you know, the mentoring aspect of kind of what you mm -hmm. do. Can you talk to me about that? So the mentoring is great on Career Boost. I have to say, I wish I had this much help on my first job out of uni, to be honest. So basically, when a graduate is successful and in a role, they will be paired with an academic mentor from a university. This mentor will be able to provide them with technical expertise in their chosen field and will be able to offer advice as they move along through the project. So there's also a company mentor within the company who will help and support the graduate as well and encourage the graduate. We've also got a consultant who will check in with the graduate so they're not linked with the academic or with the company, but they'll be checking in with the graduate to make sure that everything's running smoothly for them. Because we understand that it is a big transition for many moving straight from university into this project management role. So along with that, we also set up quarterly um, meetings with that project to also help the graduate refine their project management skills. They're encouraged to lead that meeting and to provide a, a presentation for everyone on how they're they're getting on with the project. Um, I think this helps that um, build resilience and is also sort of challenging thinking 
and so we're putting in them out of their comfort zone essentially with the presentation with the full project management team. So another exciting part of the programme is that graduates can actually avail of a fully funded postgraduate diploma in business management from Queen's University in Belfast. So this qualification, I think, adds an extra takeaway for the graduate as well as the hands-on experience that they have with the project management within the company. So another thing that they also have is the graduates have access to a training budget which will help them utilise and enhance their skills and gain technical qualifications throughout their time in the programme. Yeah, that's all fantastic. I think there's a lot of unique elements to the, you know, the career we're offering, which is really, really good. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. And um, Joanne, as well, it's important to say as well, I think because you're dealing with so many different companies, you don't have a specific graduate programme, that you're actually hiring all, like companies are hiring all year round. So, you know, it's always exactly. important to look on the website for the jobs continuously. And as well, like, exactly. you know, obviously there's different specifications for each job. So, you know, it's easy to say any student can apply, but, you know, the details of each job will be different, but you can find all that on the website, I'm sure. Yes, so basically, as you say there, that we're promoting jobs all year round. Therefore, we're looking for applications all year. The best place to see what roles are available is check on our website, um, intertradeireland.com forward slash career hyphen boost. And on there, you'll be able to see what current opportunities are available. On the website, you're also able to check and um, you're able to log your interests. And by providing us with your email address, we will notify you about new roles as and when they appear. Um, so between our website and Facebook, all opportunities will be sort of marketed there. Um, and as you say, yes, every job is unique. Um, just talking to Margaret and Breda here, you can see the difference there. Um, so each job has a specific specification and it'll tell you exactly what the company wants for their qualifications and their skills. And if you have, if you meet that criteria, then absolutely you should be applying for that job. Um, all those jobs require almost immediate start. So it's important that you have either graduated or you're due to graduate if that's mentioned on the spec. Um, also, if necessary, you should have a visa to allow you to work and study in Northern Ireland and Ireland. Exactly, because like, like we said in the intro, you know, roles are you know, nationwide and in the north of Ireland. So obviously, yes. from a student and graduate perspective, you know, different students, their personalities and their qualifications suit different roles. You know, some people like to work for big, you know, companies, but other people kind of you can work for smaller kind of family run businesses or medium sized enterprises and get on the ground and really have an influence and get to know the people. So, Margaret, we'll just start with you. Kind of, can you now outline, you know, briefly what's involved when a graduate kind of does join you? OK, so basically we have to be very clear before we start um, uh, what the program, what we want from the from the from the project. Um, and, and I suppose it's important that we um, outline the key objectives of the project and to make sure that the person who is coming into the company will be able to achieve those. And obviously with the help of, of the partnering company, you know, so for us, for example, it could be something like we're, we're looking at the moment actually something technically within our hatchery up in, in our farm in, in Wicklow. Um, and and um, you know the graduate is getting on very well there. We're working with the partner company in in, in in Ulster University who have uh, I suppose not not knowledge around the area we're looking at. So we have to outline the key tasks, uh, look at the objectives over the course of the of the time, and and uh, as you say, that person has to lead the project. So that's that's what we're looking for really, you know. And I think it's important also that that um, graduate um, uh, fits in well with the company in terms of on the ground from a social point of view that you know he feels part of they feel part of the company and and that they are not afraid to get their hands dirty as well and you know it's not just a, an administrative role it's very hands-on you know we've been very very fortunate over the years we did a pro program a number of years ago with a, a graduate from queen's university with queen's university and in fact a lot of the work that that person would have done would have been on our farm here in goldsbridge and we're about to invest in um, a very serious upgrade and renovations on our farm here. A lot of the work that was started by that graduate, um, you know, so it's, I suppose, any work that they do here, for us, it's very real and it's very meaningful. And, and that's important. So I think the graduate gets a, a lot of um, job satisfaction as well because it's real. And it's, you know, we're a, bit, we're a small company and, and therefore, you know, um, 
I suppose there's a lot of uh, responsibility early on. It's not, I mean, as a, as a mother or a son who was about to go into a graduate program, he's in second year in business in DCU. You know, for me, it was all about keeping that in mind and what, you know, the program that Intertrade Ireland run, you know, you're looking for something similar for him in a, in a company he would, you know, so he's not stuck in the corner filing paper. You know, he gets some real experience. And I think one something that's really, really important, I think, for a graduate is that the company that they go into is that, you know, that they basically have a very good structure in place a structure of learning, a stru- you know, and that's really important that you're well you're organized. And I think, you know, the program absolutely allows that because of the way it's been carried, rolled out, you know. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that'll be years to, music of the years for some, you know, graduates because you know, there are some people who love the idea of working in an office and, you know, the administrative bits and pieces. And that's, you know, fantastic. People like that. But there's also roles out there for graduates, you know, who maybe want a bit of physical activity or want a bit of, you know, out of office work as well, which is great. So, uh, Brida, can you outline what is involved with a graduate when they join you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, we're, we're quite um, a diverse company. So we've got the manufacturing side, we've got a clinical side, and we've uh, an administrative supportive side. So there's a lot of different roles and different skills and skill sets. Um, when graduates start, we, we like them to get an overview on the whole business. Um, like as, as a graduate that's quite adaptable and, and can take um, on different roles quite quickly. Um, and then we, we I, tr- I suppose, try and gear the job as well to suit the graduate and the graduate to suit the job and build on people's strengths within the company. And that's kind of changed our direction sometimes as a company because we're small that we can, uh, you know, we have a couple of guys at the moment who are quite into additive manufacture and it's allowed us to change in those areas. Um, so we would also do a lot of in-service supervised training. Our graduates would be really, I suppose, there's the risk in a small business of, of something going wrong and the implications of that are stronger. So the level of supervision um, initially is probably a little bit stronger because we, we can't afford to, to make mistakes. Um, uh, so we, we get quite good in-service training. I think our graduates do very well on that area. Um, but then we have graduates who've, started with us and maybe moved to, to another job after several years somewhere else but that's helped our international network um, we have graduates who left us and came back and some of those are now in, in management positions within the company um, so we also do a lot of external tr- training of our graduates so you've mentioned the, the postgraduate management and um, we'd also do a lot of shorter courses and not rely on our own resources to train those people but access as much I like to I think graduates are great on learning and try and foster that lifelong learning element within the graduates when they come in. Um, so so that ethos uh, within the company would be quite strong of education. Um, so yeah, I think I think we um, we love having graduates that are vibrant and new energy and particularly at the moment there's a lot of people open to change and open to different ways of working. And I think graduates sometimes have skills in technological areas that maybe older um, people who are a little bit set in their ways um, will lean more on the graduates and actually learn from them in a different way in in, in the coming months and and, and years maybe exactly. yeah. Well, they didn't so, have two um, completely different offerings, yeah. which shows yeah. you know the options out there for graduates and that careers can link you to. You know, one is you know which fair and one is with yourself at APOP yeah. and two completely different roles, but also really exciting and you know. But like I think the the variety is just great. Um, also, I wanted to talk you know briefly about kind of. You know, everyone talks about you know the new future and what that will look like, and I think it's impossible for anyone to really say with any definity what it will look like. But SMEs are in a unique position, as I mentioned, you know, to deal with change really, really quickly. So, Mark, we'll just go back to you quickly. What does the future for kind of Goat Breeds like? Um, you know, in terms of for graduates and as the business as a whole itself, once this is all over. So, what's the future look like as a result of our present situation? Yeah. Um, mind. And I think the future is going to be different for everybody. I think the way in which we work, um, I was explaining earlier how I don't think people will travel like they did in the past. You know, I think, this, uh, you know, I think, uh, and I suppose virtual meetings will be happening everywhere. I think people will be more, will be more conscious of the time. You know, um, for, for, I think for us as a company, um, I, think, I think now is a very good time to actually make the changes that are necessary and be ahead of the curve once this, this whole thing lifts. You know, I think be brave while those around you are fearful. Maybe that's probably a, a good bit of advice at the moment. But, um, I think for 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 us as an organisation, as a company, food the food industry will change. 
I think it's been it's been it's been great. People now realise the importance of food, of good food, of local food. You know, I think um, there's certainly going to be a change in terms of food trends. You know, I mean, because you will have less people travelling. You know, the whole notion of convenience and on the go food has probably taken a big hit, and won't be as relevant or as important going forward. You know, and um, what will be important is people being able to access good food. You know, the knowledge around cooking from scratch. And all the things that, that the change that we have to take all those trends on board now, but the world will be a different place than, 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 than we thought it would have been six months ago. So, um, you know, so I think technology for fish farming as well, it, you know, that was happening anyway. So I don't think, you know, the way in which we have to go as a company is going to be affected by, you know, COVID or what's happened. And um, um, I think because we, we're going down that road anyway. And this is, as we say, about bringing in graduates with new ideas, with new skills. You know, this is why they can come and help us see things in a different way. And um, so we're doing that anyway. And I think uh, now is a very good time. I think, you know, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a huge opportunity for graduates now, you know, because they are new and they have different ways of thinking. Whereas I think a lot of the old uh, and maybe older employees would probably be redundant in lots of ways now. You know, it's time to, to look forward and. I suppose, you know, we have, I think the future, I think the future is bright for food companies and uh, people respect what we do now and appreciate what we do because at the end of the day, it's been so important and relevant, you know, and for us, food for health, food for well-being, you know, I joke about people that actually rainbow trout can cure COVID because we may, uh, extra source of vitamin D, but all joking aside, there are research and studies being done on that, you know, maybe that's something for our graduates to come and work for, with us on, you know, and use that as a, as, as a marketing ploy, but yeah, look, I, I think the future um, um, is bright for food companies. We're that's, right yeah, that's all brilliant. It's like, you know, great to hear, to, you know, to hear some positivity around everything. Great. And, you know, really from your point of view, from APOS as well, what does the future look like for you? Um, yeah, again, the future looks very different. Um, as you say, to what it looked six months ago, I what it looked six weeks ago even, actually. Um, and uh, one thing uh, I think for, for us, the change in people's acceptance, remote consultation in the healthcare industry um, is going to change completely. I think the older generation that would have been very um, much wanting to be seen and have a hands-on consultation are going to be a lot more open to the idea of remote consultation and that opens opportunities for that area within healthcare settings um, and as technology has improved so much in in how we and how fluent we are in in using this technology ourselves internally now i think that will help us to to reach out with those kind of technologies so that people won't need maybe the same number of appointments they might need some appointments but not as many appointments and again that brings opportunity in relation to maybe remote or more international working um within our industry um particularly um i suppose the world has become a smaller place and a bigger place at the same time in that I think people will be reluctant to travel and they want real value for their traveling. If they're traveling, they're gonna only do it for certain um, things and, and they weigh the risk of that travel against the importance of it. And I think when people do travel, it'll be for a valuable product or a valuable experience, as opposed to, as you said, that the, the convenience side, I think will we'll have um, dissipated uh, remotely. Um, uh, I think, there's going to be a lot of graduates, I suppose, that would have maybe left the country that have come back and a lot of people coming out. My feeling is that they will bring a vibrancy. And they're, again, the, the lower risk, I suppose, from the COVID side of things. But they're, um, they're, they're a great resource that we've probably lost throughout the years. And that vibrancy, I think, will feed into the, into the communities locally um, and the urban base that has been created is now going to hopefully maybe dissipate a little bit and, and that smaller places get a chance to regenerate in a way that they didn't um, before. And I think that's going to change how Ireland looks. And I would be quite positive about some of that, actually. Yeah. Great to hear, look, a sense of positivity around everything, That's like despite, you know, yeah. the uncertainty we're in, to, for people to be positive is great. And I just want to close up finally, just Joanne, by asking you, would you have, as you know, you get to see all these roles happening, you know, as you would your role in trade and career boost, would you have a message for students and graduates out there about, you know, in terms of applying for jobs and what the future looks like and to encourage them that, you know, despite what's happening, this is actually an important time in human history and it's an exciting time and you can still start your graduate career. Absolutely, we will. Following on from Margaret and Breda there, it's a perfect example of, though it's very difficult and uncertain time for everybody, 
both these businesses are adapting and seeing the positive and the opportunities out there. So I think that demonstrates exactly what Career Boost is all about and the type of companies that are involved, that by their nature, they are very adaptable and can adjust and even thrive in times of great change. They're fast paced and offer graduates an alternative route into the increasingly competitive job market. So I think the important thing to remember is that the STEM industry are still hiring and they're looking for skilled and motivated graduates out there. So it's a great opportunity for people. And um, in regards to career boost, it's not learning on the job, it's learning to lead. And I think it's a very exciting opportunity for graduates to be able to go into a company and lead them through this innovation process in real time. And what an amazing accomplishment you would have by the end of it looking back and saying that you are a vital contributor to that development and improvement within the company. Exactly, some great points there. Reed, I think you want to come in there on something? And yeah, I just I kind of forgot to say there, I just think that by working locally now, we're actually working internationally um, as well. I think, I think that we don't need to be international physically to work internationally. I think the world is, has become a much smaller place from, from that point of view. And you know, uh, so it's good to, that a graduate coming in isn't going to be stuck into a, a little corner job in a, in a small company. They, they'll actually maybe be able to reach out internationally much easier now. Yeah, yeah exactly, it's a great point. Sorry, Mark, do you want to jump in there? Sorry, well, I was just saying, you know, when you talk about that, you know, what's local now, local is national even in terms of people access to food, you know, the online has become very, very important. So it's, it's, it's true to say that the graduates local is not just small town. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, you know, great point to finish on because also, with, you know, wipes everything up in the blow. So I'd like to thank everyone for your time today. It's, you know, in these times, I think everyone is, you know, taking part in the Zoom calls and the meetings. So I appreciate, <laughs> you know, you know, your, your half an hour here today. So thank you very much and I hope everyone keeps safe and well. No problem. Okay. okay thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.